Shared hosting versus VPS. Both are very popular, but they fill very different needs. So in this video, I'm gonna break down everything for you. What they are, how they differ, who they're for, and by the end, you'll know whether you should roll with the simplicity of shared hosting or level up to the power and flexibility of a VPS hosting. Let me find the perfect home for your project. So let me start by explaining the difference between VPS and shared hosting so that we're all on the same page. What is shared hosting? It's like renting a bunk in a dorm room. You're living with a bunch of other websites on the same server, all sharing the same bathroom, kitchen, and air conditioning. Not ideal, but hear me out. It's cheap, convenient, and perfect if you're just starting out or running a small blog or business that doesn't need much space. There are some downsides, of course. Let's say your neighbor throws a party. One of the sites on the server gets a traffic spike. Your site performance might suffer. You all share the same pool of resources, and if someone starts cannonballing into it, everyone fills the splash. To avoid all of those inconveniences and get more space for yourself, you can go with VPS hosting. This is like having your own apartment in a building. You're still in the same physical structure as others, but you've got your own bathroom, your own fridge, maybe even your own pool, and nobody can barge into your space. You still share space on the same server, but you get dedicated resources and a lot more control. If you're running a growing business, a busy e-commerce site, or you just want the reliability of knowing that what happens to someone else won't affect you, VPS is the upgrade you need. Now, what exactly you get with either shared hosting or VPS also depends on the plan and the provider you choose. Providers like Hostinger, Ionis, and Bluehost offer both hosting options. For instance, Hostinger stands out for making both shared and VPS hosting beginner-friendly while keeping prices low. Ionis leans towards solid performance and scalability, great for users who know their way around the server. Bluehost makes it easy to grow, starting from shared and stepping up to VPS when your site demands real muscle. Whichever of the three providers you choose, use my discount from the description. Yes, I have it for all of them. Whether you need VPS or just shared hosting, so you don't have to overpay. With this info, you might think, wait, why would I ever go with shared hosting? Well, shared hosting comes with the obvious pro of a low cost. It's the cheapest way to get online. Plus, maintenance is handled for you. Setup is quick, and you don't need to know anything about managing servers. Perfect for beginners or anyone who just wants a site up without diving into tech shenanigans. But the flip side is the lack of privacy and control. You are relying on everyone else in the room to behave, and if something breaks down, like the shared shower, it affects everyone. VPS hosting steps things up. You have your own dedicated resources. That means faster load times, better uptime, and the freedom to configure your virtual server however the hell you want. You get root access and dedicated resources, so you're free to run heavier applications or handle traffic spikes. The downside is that it's more expensive and it asks more of you. Managing your own space means you're responsible for what's inside. Let's say you don't know how to troubleshoot a server error. You'll either need to learn or pay someone who can. So with shared hosting, you're trading control for simplicity and cost. It's the easier communal way to live online. With VPS, you're investing in privacy, power, and scalability, but you'll need a bit more tech know-how or a managed plan. Choosing between the two isn't just about budget, it's about how much freedom you want and how much noise you're willing to tolerate from the neighbors. Another big difference is that shared hosting is basically just for hosting websites, while VPS is also used for websites, it can be used for development and testing environments, game servers, or even things like VPN hosting. Another popular use case that's on the rise is automation platforms like NAN. The reason here is simple. If you set it up on an affordable VPS provider like Hostinger, it will be much cheaper than paying the N8N subscription, like four times cheaper. So besides choosing VPS versus shared hosting, you'll also need to choose the right provider. I've already mentioned my top recommended providers for whatever your needs are, shared or VPS. They have different price points, but I picked the ones that are definitely worth the money. Let me help you pick the right subscription. First, we have Hostinger, which brings the best overall value, whether you go for VPS or shared hosting. Their VPS plan's pricing is super friendly, and the only difference between all of them is the resources that you get. If you're just starting out and not yet sure you know how many resources you need, KVM1 is going to be a good starting point. Overall though, KVM2 brings the best value. If you're going to use something like N810Q mode, which is like N810 on steroids, it's going to be the clear-cut best option, as the resources provide 
provided by KVM1 will not be enough for that. Still, to get the best deal for any of the hosting of VPS plans, scan this QR code or click on the link in the description. And if all you need is shared hosting, you'll also find the best deals in the description. Hosting a shared hosting is always a great deal. For the price you pay, the resources are plenty, and it has other perks like their AI website builder included for free, as well as great WordPress support. Now, if you're after a really cheap VPS hosting, Ionist is a great option. It has six tiers of VPS plans. That's actually kind of neat, because if you know exactly how many resources you need for your project, it helps to save even more. I really dig the flexibility. Looking at Ionis shared hosting, it has to be the best provider if you're on a budget. Their plus plan for just $1 a month for the first year is hard to beat for any other web hosting provider. Some of you might need more power than Ionis or hosting a VPS can offer. For that, I can recommend Bluehost VPS because the massive resources it brings it's also managed, meaning you lose the headache of managing everything by yourself. But if you want to, you can self-manage too. Best of both worlds kind of deal, you know. But yes, there is always a but. For such flexibility and resources, you'll have to shell out significantly more than with Hostinger or Ionis. Bluehost shared hosting is much more affordable though, but it still covers all the essentials and actually plenty of resources for the price too. I like how even the starter plan has NVMe storage. Okay, so shared hosting versus VPS hosting. Which one is for your project? Shared hosting is going to be more than enough if you're just getting started running a small site like a blog or portfolio or keeping costs low. It's beginner friendly and you can always upgrade once your site gains traction. VPS is going to be a better pick or outright needed when traffic picks up, performance matters, or you need more control. With dedicated resources and root access, it's your own private setup, faster, more reliable, and fully customizable. All right, that would be all in this VPS hosting versus shared hosting comparison. Let me know what you want me to cover next. Maybe more on NA10 or maybe VPS for gaming. Whatever it is, leave a comment, and don't forget that deals for the lowest hosting prices are in the description. Thanks for watching. Peace.